मैम यू आर ऑन म्यूट थैंक्स सेड गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन वेलकम टू टुडे सेशन ऑन न्यू टेस्टमेंट सर्वे टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी ऑन द एपिसोड ऑफ पॉल um writing to the church at ephesians so before we could begin can i request one of us to please lead us in prayer zeli would you like to yes sure pastor yes let's pray father god we come before your presence in the name of jesus father we want to thank you so much for this brand new day as we begin our class i pray that you bless each one of us you bless our pastor as she teaches us give her your wisdom your grace and also uh bless each one of us so that our hearts are receptive so that we can learn new thing from your word as we study yes. the book of ephesians lord we commit our life our time everything into your care to lord jesus in jesus name yes. amen jesus name amen amen thank you zeli thank you so even before we could begin let me present the presentation okay so today we're going to study on the book of ephesians a church that is built on christ so in the book of ephesians totally we have about 6 chapters so the first three chapters the six chapters are divided into two and the first three chapters where we see our position in Christ who we are in Christ has been uh, uh declared very clearly and then from chapter 4 to 6 we see our practice on Christ we see that so um in chapter 1 we see that what god has done for us emphasis on the sovereignty of who god is and then chapter 2 verse 1 to 10 talks about what christ has done in us and where it emphasizes on this grace and then from chapter 2 verse 11 to chapter 3 verse 21 it talks about what christ has done between us where it emphasizes on the reconciliation and in chapter 4 we see that from verse 1 to 16 it talks about our new unity that is our identity in Christ on this earth where we have a new unity where the, uh, the scripture clearly says that we are no more our old being but we have been born new how in the way that we live our life the way that we lead our life and chapter 4 verse 17 to chapter 6 verse 9 it talks about a new walk a new lifestyle when we are in christ how things change in us automatically because no more we are living our life the way we used to live before but then now things are changing because we have christ himself who lives in us and then chapter 6 verse 10 to 20 we see that a new strength because our identity is in Christ we have been strengthened with him the armor of god okay we see the complete armor of god from verse 10 onwards we see how we need to put on the armor of god and then we see the emphasis on the whole book like um you know the first three chapters emphasizes on our vertical relationship with god and man and then verse 4 to 6 we see the practical bit the uh, relationship with others which is horizontal and then we see the key verse the uh, uh, the core phrase here is in uh, chapter 1 verse 4 can i request one of us to read chapter 1 verse 4 please Sid, can you read chapter one, verse four? Uh, just we as should. he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So, what we see here, chapter one, verse four, we see that he chose us in him before the 
foundation of the earth. So God knows each one of us, even before the foundation of the earth. And in time, God has released us into this earth. Can I request it to read chapter 4, verse 1? Ephesians chapter 4 verses 1 As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life of worthy of calling you to have you have received. So here we see Paul is encouraging each one of us to walk worthy of the calling with which we are called forth. Each one of us have a calling. There is a call. There is a purpose which uh, Last semester when we studied on fulfilling God's purpose, we saw that each one of us have been called for a purpose. And there is a part that each of us should play in. It's not that, okay, God is called, everything will happen automatically. No, we have a role. We need to participate. We need to collaborate with Christ. We need to, uh, you know, uh, we need to be willing enough to walk worthy of the calling that God has called us. And we see some of the subjects here, declaration of heavenly truths that is there in chapter 1, 2, 3. And we also see the exhortations for earthly living. And some of the three prayers that has been recorded in this book is Paul's prayer for the Ephesians. From chapter 1, verse 15 to 23, we see Paul's prayer for the Ephesians. And chapter 3 verse 14 to 21 we see paul's prayer for the whole church to 20 we see uh, christians pray for one another so we see the importance of prayer here just like how we saw in the gospel like how jesus took time to pray and prayer was the vital key for a christian life here we see Paul emphasizing on prayer. We need to talk to God. We need to develop this relationship with God where we can come to him at any time for any reason and come to him in prayer. So here we see Paul emphasizing on prayer. And the whole theme of this book is the holy community God is creating and how it is to live out its calling. And the key verses here is verse one, chapter 1, verse 9. Can I request one of you all to read? There are many key verses, but we will just focus on these two. Chapter 1, verse 9 to 10. If time permits, I can share the other key verses as well with the class. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. And he yes. made known to us, and he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasures which he purposed in Christ to be put into the effect when the times will be reached their fulfillment to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. Yes. Thank you. Can I request one of you all to uh, turn to chapter 4, verse 1 to 3? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 to 3. I therefore, the prisoners of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all loneliness and meekness, with long suffering, for bearing one another in love, endeavor, endeavoring to keep the unities of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. So, in the first key verse we see we have the redemption in Christ we have been redeemed in him there is a purpose that he has called and in fullness of time he will release us he will dispense us we see the redemption in Christ and in the second key verse we see to walk in unity where we need to be uh, we need to uh, walk in all lowliness and gentleness with long suffering bearing with one another in love endeavoring to keep the unity of spirit in the bond of peace. Amen. And then Christ in the book of Ephesians, the last verse, we see that Jesus is the source of spiritual blessing. 
Jesus is the source of the spiritual blessing, the cornerstone of the church and the goal of the spiritual maturity. So with that, we will move on to study the book of Ephesians. I'll just stop. Presenting. Give me a minute, please. I'll just share a little bit about the background of Ephesians so that we understand what is happening there. The author of this book, who's the author of this letter? Ma'am Paul. Yes, Paul is the author of this letter. The book of Ephesians was written to God's holy people in Ephesians. We see that in chapter 1, verse 1, he says that, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Jesus Christ. And it was intended for the circulation among the seven churches of Asia Minor. How do we know that? We see that in the Revelations chapter 2 and 3. So the city of Ephesus was a large, had a large commercial port city in Asia Minor. So in the present day, it is called as Turkey, which is located at the uh, mouth of Castor River. So uh, being the capital of the Roman province of Asia, Ephesus was considered to be the gateway to Asia. Additionally, the city of Ephesus was known as a center for pagan worship and the temple of Greek goddesses Artemis where the Roman goddesses, it is also known as Diana. So considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world and was located just outside the city limits. And people across the world traveled to Ephesus to visit this temple. And the industry of a blacksmith uh, grew and became very prosperous because uh, he was... Um, selling the silver idols of Artemis, the goddesses of Artemis or goddesses of Diana there. So uh, his business was prospering. So what happened now? When Paul stepped into the city, he started sharing the good news. He started proclaiming the good news to the people around them. Then people started receiving the gospel message. So when they started to receive the message of gospel, they stopped buying those idols or worshipping the goddesses of Artemis. So what happened? The business was affected. Because the business of this person, uh, his name is Dieterius, was affected. So what he did? He called others called others uh, uh, and he, he, he created a riot to go against Paul. So Demetrius plotted against Paul and enticed a large angry crowd people uh, to come against Paul. Uh, you know, uh, the history says there were about 24,500 uh, people shouting, saying, great is Artemis of Ephesians. And Ephesians officials, uh, they were scared about these uh, great... Uh, I'll just mute Subhashish Mike. Yeah. Thanks. So what happened? So uh, so the officials of the Ephesians got scared. They may harm Paul. So they want to protect him. So what they did, they protected Paul and his followers. And eventually, uh, you know, they sent them out safe so that he is safe. And the Christians became the official of this city. Uh, yes, Paul stayed there about three years and uh, he could minister to the people of Ephesus and Christianity grew in this place. So as we see this, we should also know that 
uh, the history says Mary, the mother of Jesus, seemed to uh, she was living there along with John after the death of Jesus. So they have made a home and they were staying there. Even now they have a church and there's a house of Mary, which is there. And also we see, uh, one second, I'm just getting out the person's name. Uh, So Paul stayed in Ephesus about three years and he ministered. And during this time, Paul has made Ephesus as his headquarters. And having uh, received a good report about these churches, where he received this report through Titicus, was uh, uh, Titicus, and he was ready to make a trip to Ephesus. So Paul caught hold of this opportunity to send the three letters three letters through Titicus. So which are the three letters that he wrote in the uh, in the prison when he was at Rome? And it is also known as the prison epistle. There are three. But that is Ephesians, Colossians, and the letter to Philemon. These are the three letters that Paul wrote when he was in prison. And it is also known as prison epistle. So who is Titicus? Can anyone tell? They also call, his, call him as Tychicus. Yeah. Who was Tychicus? Where did we, did we get to hear his name before? Well, when we study, we see Tychicus uh, uh, is only mentioned about five times in the New Testament. But the ministry he provided was worthy so we see him he first uh met uh paul first met the chickens in acts chapter 20 verse 4 can i request one of us to turn to acts chapter 20 verse 4 please acts chapter 20 verse 4 Who's ready to read? And so Peter of Berea accompanied to him, accompanied him to Asia. Also, Aristarchus and Secundus of the Thessalonians and Gaius of Derbe and Timothy and Tychicus and Trophimus of Asia. Okay. So we see that. Paul met him there. During Paul's third missionary journey, he mentioned as one of Paul's companion on the way from Corinth to Jerusalem to deliver a gift to the church there. So we learn that Tychicus or, yeah, Tychicus was a native of Asia or, uh, uh, or Asia Minor in today. So Tychicus is called as a dear brother by Paul and a faithful servant of the Lord. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 21, this is what Paul mentioned him as. And also in Colossians chapter 4, verse 7, we see that Tychicus, uh, Paul mentions Tychicus as his faithful minister and a fellow servant. He was with Paul during this first Roman imprisonment. So he was entrusted to deliver Paul's letter to the churches of Ephesians, Colossians, and to Philemon, to bring the news of the apostle to the to those in the congregation. And uh, uh, Tychicus will tell, tell you the news about me. We read that in Colossians chapter 4, verse 7 to 8, that I'm sending him to you to express the purpose that you may know about our circumstances and that he may encourage your hearts. We also see that in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 22. Can I request one of us to read Ephesians chapter 6, verse 22? Ephesians chapter 6 verses 22. I am sending him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are 
and that we may encourage you so we see that encouragement is also mentioned as part of tichika's ministry and along with uh, tichika's we also see onesimus and we will not talk about him much now but yes we will talk about him when we study the letter to philemon and yeah so with that uh, we will move on to the main letter of efficient so keeping this as the background like paul visited this city of ephesus in his second missionary journey how do we know that we see that in acts chapter 18 verse 19 to 31 when we study we see that paul visits first he visits the ephesians in his second missionary journey and on that occasion he was hurried because he wants to reach jerusalem for the council on time so he is in a hurry so he could not uh, stay there for a long time so he briefly ministers in the synagogue and he leaves to jerusalem but then paul comes back in his third missionary missionary journey to ephesus and he stays there for three long years because he knows the importance of this place so he stays there for three long years and he minister and he founds the church in ephesus in acts chapter 19 we see that paul's first converts were the disciples of john the baptist where when we read acts chapter 19 verse 7 1 to 7 we see Apollos being the uh, disciple of John the Baptist he comes and ministers to people and here Paul meets the 12 of them 12 of them and he ministers to them he shares the gospel to them and he finds that they have been baptized by the baptism of John the the baptism of repentance so here Paul shares about the holy spirit and then he baptizes them Paul uh, uh, very few instances we see that Paul baptizing the people but because his call is only to share the gospel and minister the good news to the gentile so we see that paul uh, uh, sharing the gospel message to the disciples the 12 disciples of john and then he baptizes them and when they have been baptized you see that they have been filled with the power of the holy spirit and that's how his ministry begins at the place of ephesus so in acts 19 8 we see that paul spent about Three months ministering in the local synagogue before he could step out. How did he step out? What happened? What was the instance that happened uh, um, for which the reason was Paul to step out from synagogue? What happened was um, we see that he was rejected in the synagogue because uh, some of the Jews were causing trouble. In the previous uh, letters, we see that the same Jews. came even here they started sharing to the other jews who were living in uh, ephesus so uh, they started rejecting paul's teaching and that also would have been one of the reason where paul had to step out of synagogue and move outside and we see that this did not stop uh, paul from sharing the gospel when paul moved out of synagogue he started teaching and preaching to the gentiles outside and in acts 1910 we see that uh, all in asia heard the word some have suggested that seven churches of asia which is described in revelation chap- chapter 1 to chapter 3 may have been started during this time it could be either directly or indirectly through the ministry of paul which was started and in acts chapter 19 verse 11 when we read can i request one of us to turn to acts 19 verse 11 acts 19 verses 11 god did extra extraordinary miracles through paul yes we see that when paul stepped out he started preaching the good news on the streets we see unusual miracles by the handkerchief for by touching his above his clothes unusual miracles started happening there were signs 
wonders and miracles and through these many gentiles came to the knowledge of christ they received jesus as the lord and savior we also see some mag uh, magicians were dramatically saved and uh, in verse 20 we see that the word of god grew mightily and prevailed and the gospel disrupted the local trade in goddesses replicas and silver shrines which affected the business of demetrius a local silversmith and we also know what he did he instigated a riot against paul because his business was affected and paul felt that it was um, it was time for him to leave so that the work could continue there he has uh, raised enough of spiritual leaders who were strong in the word and they would continue the ministry so as it turned out paul would spend nearly uh, three years ministering in ephesus and that was the longest time that he could uh, spend there in his entire ministry when compared to the other places so what do we know about the city of ephesus as I briefly shared in the starting, uh, it was one of the top five cities of the world in those days, other than uh, Alexandria or Antioch or Corinth or Rome. And it was one of the major shipping port and crossroads for the merchants who were moving goods from east to west. So they had to drop in and they also visited this temple, which was one of the seven wonders in those days. And it was a very wealthy city and had many of the uh, and uh, same issues like the issues that was in Corinth was there because uh, they worshipped this goddesses, goddesses of Artemis or Diana. She was the goddesses of fertility. So there were many similar issues that the Corinthian ch church was facing. I mean, the place was facing same issues we could find even at the place of Ephesus. So it was... Um, a huge temple and uh, there was a major tourist attraction in those days and it was one of the seven wonders and uh, it highly uh, uh, yes there was a lot of jews who were staying there and because there was a uh, many jews who were living there they started a synagogue in that place we see that in acts chapter 2 19 we see that the synagogue was there and even when paul visited first the officials he started this ministry in the synagogue and this place received the ministry from many key leaders uh, Ephesus was ministered by uh, paul aquila priscilla apollos then later by timothy and apostle john And we all know where this book was written. Where was it written? Where was this letter to Ephesians was written? Yes, Brother Lobega, please go ahead. I don't remember, but I think it was in Collis. This book was written in the prison of Rome. They were, that's why it is known as a, a, a prison epistle there were three letters written in the prison one is sorry four letters written in the prison that is philippians colossians the letter to philemon and ephesians so it is uh, ephesians ephesians were one of the four uh, such letters that is written in the prison how do we know that when we turn to ephesians chapter 6 can we turn to ephesians chapter 6 verse 19 to 20 Ephesians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. Ephesians chapter 6, 19 to 20. Pray also for me that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will fear I will be fearless. Make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Thank you. Thank you, Sid. So we see that he was in chains as he writes this letter. He was in the 
prison. So there are four letters that he wrote when he was in the prison of Rome. That is Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. And it was most likely written uh, sometime between 60 to 64 AD. And it was written for no particular reason. There's no reason why he is writing this letter, but then just to know their well-being. When he wrote the other letters from prison, he had a specific purpose in mind when he wrote. But this letter was just to know the well-being of people. And this is the significant, uh, significant because it tells us what is uh, meditation where while he was in the custody. We see that uh, the letter to Philippians was written to thank them for the offering to encourage me, encouraging them during this time of suffering. And there's a reason why he wrote the letter to Colossians uh, to request the founder to correct certain doctrinal errors. And then the letter to Philemon was written to Philemon to accept the return of his slave Onesimus. So there is a purpose why he was writing each and every letter, but with Ephesians, it was a well being. And what was the main theme of this book? We can refer to our notes. And can you tell me what is the uh, main theme of this book of Ephesians? It is a letter of encouragement where we see uh, as we read this letter, we understand that Paul, though he was in prison, see, his mind was not focused on his bondage, on that he is put in um, prison or he's been chained. But then he focused on what he had. He set his mind above and not on the situation that he was in. Though he was in difficult time. But here we see that he is completely focused on the freedom that he had in Christ. And he is encouraging each one of us to have this mindset, no matter what situation and circumstance we would, we are in. But then he is encouraging each one of us to be focused on Christ because we have a true freedom in Christ. So Paul focused on what he had in Christ and not on what he did not have. When we read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1 to 14, we see that this portion uh, more closely resembles to the Psalms, where it talks about, uh, you know, uh, how blessed we are in Christ. He lifts God in praise and thanksgiving for the benefits that he has, just like how the Psalmist said, like uh, in Psalms 103, he said, uh, uh, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Despite the situation what Psalm, Psalmist was in, despite the situation what David was in, but then we see that he glorifying God in his situation. In a similar manner, Paul is doing. Even when uh, uh, before this, when we were studying the book of Acts, we see the instances where Paul and Silas were in prison. What did Paul and Silas do? They rejoiced in God. They started singing praise to God. Even the prisoners, uh, the, uh, the prison in charge were shocked at the very attitude that they carried. And we see the same attitude being very contagious in Paul. No matter which situation he is in, he has been continually giving praise and thanks to God. And we see the heart of gratitude in Paul, uh, which is giving praise to God. We also see uh, some of the chapters here. Chapter 1 talks about the eternal purpose of the church and the preeminent one in Christ. And chapter 2 talks about the temple of God and the chief cornerstone in Christ. And chapter 3 talks about the family of God. The church is the family of God and Christ is the firstborn of son. And the very aspect or the purpose of this is multiplicity, how we can spread the gospel of Christ. And chapter 4, in Ephesians chapter 4, talks about the church as the body of Christ. 
and Christ as the head of the body. And the function, as when we talk about the body, the function of the body, different parts and its function, it talks about it. And in chapter 5, we see the church as the bride of Christ. And Christ has been the husband of the wife. And the purpose here, we see the bride for son. And in chapter 6, we see that the church is the army of God. And Christ, the captain of the army. And we see the very purpose is the dominion. And Paul focuses on what is happening in the heavenly realms and not what we see with our eyes. We see uh, how Paul described, though he was in chain, he describes about the freedom in Christ. And the very key verse in this book, we see that the heavenly places in chapter 1, verse 3, we see that uh, blessed be the God. Let me read that to you. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Look at how he sets his focus on Christ, on Father, on the heavenly places, much beyond what he was living in. We see the freedom in his spirit. So nothing could bind him, nothing could could grip him and keep him bound, uh, bonded. Nothing could keep him in the bondage. But then he, in his spirit, he was free because he set his focus on Christ. He set his identity on Christ. So what are the distinct features that we see in this book of Ephesians? We see that Paul um, in chapter 2, 4 and 6, we see that Paul referenced referring the three different spiritual postures as a believer that we have. Can I request one of us to turn to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6? Before we could close, I want to end with a few points that is very important. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, and the other can turn to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. And the next person can take up Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Someone has taken Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. Please go ahead. And raise us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Thank you. You see that? He has made us where the believer has a position in Christ. We are seated in Christ with him in the heavenly places. And chapter 4, 1. Can I request one of us to turn to chapter 4, 1? Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you, live a life worthy of calling you have received. Amen. So as a believer, we need to walk worthy the calling that we have received. We need to walk worthy of the Lord. And Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Against the wiles of the devil. So we see that as a believer, we need to take a posture. We need to take a stand to resist the devil. So that we can walk worthy of the calling that God has called each one. So we need to take a stand. We need to take a stand so that we can resist the work of the devil. Paul also describes going forward in chapter 2, verse uh, you know, 11 to 22, we see that Paul describes the relationship of the Jews and Gentiles in Christ. So he describes how was their former condition, what was the condition of the Gentiles in that place when they were living in Ephesus. They were very uh, fleshly, uncircumcised. Without Christ, they lived a lifestyle without Christ. They were strangers from the covenant of the promise of God. They had no hope. They lived a life in this world without God. But once they received Jesus as a Lord and Savior through Paul's ministry, we see that they lived their life in having an identity in Christ. 
they lived a life of peace with god and man they learned to dwell uh, to love and have peace with others as they built a relationship with god vertically they also lived in peace horizontally they loved each other they were a new creation all things have gone they stopped doing what they were doing they stopped from those ritual practices of worshiping idols or uh, the black magic which they practiced in that place they stopped from all that but now they received jesus as the lord and savior and they started to live a life in that identity and also we see that the relationship that they developed with god help them to grow more in god and we also see the unity among the jews and gentiles and paul gives us a close look at the fivefold ministry can i request one of you to turn to ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 we see the fivefold ministry has been mentioned here Ephesians and, chapter yes Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 it was he who gave us some to be apostles some to be prophet some to be evangelists and some to be pastors and teacher yes so you will see Paul's uh, Paul giving us some to be apostles there is a call of god on each one of our life here we see that when we read from um, verse 7 onwards we see that but to each one of us grace was given according to the measure of christ's gift therefore he says when he ascended on high he led captive captivity captive and gave gifts to men now this he ascended what does it mean but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth he who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things and he gave and he himself gave some to be apostles it talks about the call of god how Jesus called each one into the fivefold ministry and he says some of them were called as apostles prophets evangelists pro- pastors and teachers the fivefold ministry function has been mentioned here for the equipping of the saints he called all this fivefold ministry for what purpose to equip the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ for the expansion of God's kingdom on this earth. We also see in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 to 18 we see that how Paul gives us the detailed description of the armor of God. How important is the armor of God that we need to wear the armor of God. In verse 13 he says, "Therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having girded yourself, your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace." above all taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god verse 18 it talks about praying always with all prayer and supplication in spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints and for me that utterance may be given to me that i may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel so it is so very important for each of us to wear the armor of god which paul gives us in this verse overall the whole letter talks about um, the the letter of ephesians is a letter of encouragement it is a uh, it is a powerful revelation of what god has done for each of us in christ and how we have to live our life as believers on this earth as we say uh, as we uh, uh, 
learn that. I'll just share some of the key verses and also I'll share the reflection that we have here. Give me a minute, please. As I share this. Yeah, these are some of the key verses that we can make a note of from all the six chapters. Verse 1 to 3, we see, chapter 1, verse 3, we see that blessed with every spiritual blessing and same like that, you know, in each chapter, these are the key verses that will help us to remember the book of Ephesians, how important it is. And I will leave with this. So Paul in this letter presented the gift of God in Christ and the benefits that we have received by being in Christ. Remember how Paul wrote this epistle from the prison. So when he was in the prison, he writes about the glorious inheritance that we have in Christ, not uh, remembering like his bondage or his restrictions, but then he see the freedom that he has in Christ. So with that, I leave with two questions. If you were to write an epistle like Paul from prison, what would it be? We need to ponder on this. Would it be on the suffering, on the difficult things that he, that each of us would be facing or inquiring the goodness, inquiring the wellness about others and encouraging them even in this situation? The second question is, how have we grown in Christian life since we came to faith in Christ Jesus? I'll leave the class with these two questions to ponder on and I keep this time open for any of us to share or uh, add to our learning on this letter. Please feel free to unmute and share your learning. Any insights that you have that you would like to add, please go ahead. Yes, Brother Lubega, please go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Uh, though I've not followed the lesson <clears throat> because I was stressed up with some office work here, but um, there is where I read. There is where I read, and they say that Paul wrote that letter with the name, with the address to the Ephesians, to the Ephesus. Uh, but um, he had written also so many other letters that do not have a name. So they say that it is possible that one of that letter was the letter he had written to the people of Lodicea, because uh, I don't know how, what is your take about that? Because I think those two letters, there is Ephesians and uh, Ephesians and there is Colossians. They look to be like twin gospels, twin epistles. So, but again, there is where we read when he says that you, you take that letter, I think it is in Colossians, where it says that you should also read the letter of Lodicea. So do you think it is possible that it is the same letter he gave to Lodicea? Because there are so many copies of Ephesians which um, have no name, which is where the letter written to the church of, it is empty. What do you think about that? Thank you, Pastor. Uh, thank you, Lubega, for sharing that. Uh, see, this letter was written to share among the seven churches, uh, but about Ludisi, I'm not too sure about. I'm not too sure about that exactly. Thank you so much. But then we can look in and get back to it. But then, yes, this letter was meant to be circulated to uh, to uh, uh, to all the seven churches in Asia Minor. Okay, anyone else would like to share or add? John, Zeli, Jeffina, Joy, Paul, Aradhana, you would like to add or share your insight? Okay, as I didn't hear, we can end the session with a word of prayer. Can I request uh, one of you all to please 
end the session with a word of prayer. Joy, would you like to pray? Yes, sure. Yeah, thank you, please. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for your presence here, Lord, because you are putting in adding many, many information in us in, because you like that we know you in a better way. Thanks for the classes that we're having. Thanks for the knowledge that we are getting from you and all the clarification that you bring to us in every class. God, I ask you that you may guide all our brothers and sisters here and that they feel they are um, accompanied with you, Lord, today and every day of their lives, that they don't feel discouraged for the things that they're facing today, but they, they, that they feel like you are working on them and in their families and in their situations, Lord. Thank you because you are faithful. Thank you because you love us and you're working in us every single day. We give you our hearts and our knowledge so you can shape it and make it better and in the way that you consider us to be. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Thank you, Joy, for praying. Thank you, each one, for joining in today's session. I've also given the assignment. I request you all to please complete your assignment um, by March 6th. For e-learning, it is a different assignment. I've uploaded your uh, mid-assessment um, on the e-learning portal. Request you all to complete it. And yes, if you all have any questions, please feel free to write at admin at apcbiblecollege.org. Okay, thank you. God bless. Have a great week ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. God bless.